Hello, this is Alaric70 and Tom. Yep. Uh... And today we've got um, a sort of video about two little machines we built. Uh, and we are in our sort of house with cobblestone chair and table. <laughs> a little bit big, but... It's nice. You know. It's homey. Cozy. <laughs> uh, understated the little machines. Okay, so basically, this world was just a uh, sort of running creative server that we had a while ago. Um, it's pretty old. Very old. And we were just sort of uh, very, very old. sketching out some ideas, I guess. So. Well, at, at the time, we weren't thinking we were sketching. We were building. But at, at this point, we know there are a lot better designs. Uh, this is old enough that there are new designs simply made possible on the game mechanics um, right. and just generally stuff that can be done better so it is a sketch for our purposes yeah because later we're thinking about doing another video where we improve these designs hopefully make them a lot more compact and uh, with mine I hope to make it faster so I guess I can start talking about mine since we started in it <laughs> so mine is a 3d printer uh, which printed the house we started out in. Um, and how it works is it takes a byte of input at a time, sequence it, sequences it out one at a time in either a 1 or a 0, which translates to glass being 0, cobblestone being 1. Um, so at the end when it's done printing, if you wanted it to be a hollow shape, you would remove the glass. Um, and then as it's feeding it in, it over here is a big counter using the old flip-flop designs. Um, and basically what that does is it counts out the byte and then shifts it up one, and then when it counts four bytes, shifts it over one, um, and it just repeats that, um, printing off the input until it's full. Um, and once it's done with a byte, it sends a line here asking for the next byte from Tom's contraption. <laughs> so do you so, want to talk about yours, Tom? Yeah, so my contraption is a hard drive, a mechanical hard drive, based off of a barrel rotator, though I'm going to change that in the next design to a more efficient rotator, um, where basically it has the ability to read to and uh, or sorry, read to, uh, read from and write to um, this rotator. Um, basically, uh, the, the major challenge in this, uh, which most of this contraption is dedicated to, is the fact that you can't read from and write from the same spatial location. Uh, it's just not possible. It's kind of hard to get a shot of what you're talking about, but it's this area right yeah. here so, where you can see uh, it's it's more visible from here so ah, if, yes. you, if you look here um, we have the rotator this emerald block indicates the, the zero um, byte though we do have an address counter this is so if the two get unsynced and sync them manually and basically it reads here where all these um, repeaters are uh, out busts, here. Buses that out and sends that to the printer or any other output and an indicator, uh, which we'll see later when we get to the control room. Um, and it reads that, and in the control room, you'll press a button. You, well, one, you'll either read from it and uh, increment and tell the rotator to rotate, which is what Alex's printer does, uh, or you have the ability to tell it to edit that byte. Um, 
which in which case you need to go to the buffer because uh, you can't perform it, you, you can't uh, read and write in the same operation, you have to split it into two operations, which is read, uh, step twice, well, step once, uh, clear byte, step again, and write the byte. So the way you do this is with the buffer. So the right head is here, and the clear head is here with the glass. Yes. Because again, glass it represents zero, and because cobblestone is representing one. Uh, the reason being, glass does not conduct redstone current, where cobble does. Or any other solid block. Or any other solid block. Other uh, than a cobble. Anyway. Um, so the buffer. Uh, because there's a, a two block difference between the read head and the write head, uh, you need to store the value that the player gives um, the machine to write to that byte. So it'll say read byte, the player will say I want to edit this byte, put in their value, and then they'll, uh, and then they'll tell it to rotate one. When it rotates that one, it will rotate it up one and clear that byte if you've told it to, to clear that byte. And then in the next step, uh, it ha the value it has saved in the buffer that the player has given it will be written onto that byte. Uh, and so you need two buffers so that you can write two bytes next to each other without needing some sort of spacer between them. Uh, and that gives you the ability to read and write to a tape. Now, we have a, uh, we have a couple other functions tossed in there too, um, which if you come to the control room where everything is routed to, you can see. So we, we have the ability to print. This is simply uh, an AND gate to Alaric's printer. Uh, and Alaric's printer is connected directly to the bus lines of the, um, from the hard drive. Uh, and now we have a seek function and a indicator for the current byte address and the edit, don't edit buttons. Now the don't edit button basically just increments the, or uh, rotates the barrel by one step. The edit button uh, goes to the control circuitry and will edit a byte, save things to buffer, uh, and then write from buffer, clear the buffer, all that, all that kind of stuff. And that's all hardwired. Now, so these torches here are what he's saying is the direct output of what is stored on the current line. Yes. And so these torches is... up here are the address of that byte. In binary. In binary. Yes. So if you have an address here, but say you don't like that address. You want to be at a different address. You can use the seek function, which is, uh, which we'll, we'll go over there in just a second to show you this. But uh, it lets you go to actually. Let's, I'm just going to pick the next one so it only rotates one. Uh, you, you so in binary, I've just counted to uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. It's four, yeah. So I've just counted to four, told it to rotate, and it will now rotate. Uh, the way the circuitry works, it will rotate. Uh, around until it gets to um, the byte address that satisfies it. So if you pick so, the so same address, will it go around or will it stay where it is? It will stay where it is because the XOR gates that control that uh, are satisfied. Let, let's go take a look at that, actually. And that's this piece over here. Yes. So one of the major improvements that could obviously be made um, if this address counter were moved to the other side of the drive, um, it would reduce. Because right now it buses oh, all yes. the way around. The majority <laughs> of this area is busing, and the busing could be substantially shrunk just by moving this over there. Uh, and that would just be like generally helpful. <laughs> um, so yes, so the way this works is you have uh, four input, let's see, no, that's five input, sorry. Uh, five input and then five output uh, for your byte address. The five input go to the one of one of the two inputs to a weird IC vertical six. XOR type. There are six rotators, one of them doesn't actually have Oh, I see one of them. And so blank. there's no input line to it. Yeah. It, it, that's to illustrate the fact that this is infinitely expandable. Everything about this is. Uh, now the cool thing, the, the big one of the big features of this is that the the printer head will always be the same size regardless of the size of your drive. So what you can do is you can build one of these, 
probably a smaller version of this, which we're, we have yet to make, um, and have this massive, you know, trails off in the distance rotator uh, with, you know, hundreds of bytes on it, maybe thousands, not sure we fit that. But, um, and, and you can access all of that with one standard size head, the read write head, right? Um, anyway, so the way this works uh, is you XOR the values from a control line and the values read on this, read from this uh, ROM uh, address counter that rotates every time the main rotator rotates. And uh, because of the way the XOR operation works, you end up uh, testing for um, which one, it, you end up testing for your, your values in a very convenient way that lets you just ro uh, run that into a enable disable to a clock such that it will simply increment the, or rotate, it will step both barrels, step both rotators um, until the XOR gates are satisfied and off. Although that one appears to be bugged. Really, really bugged. Which one? Oh, wait, no, 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 it's not. This, well, never mind. It's not bugged. I was getting dumb. Uh, so yeah, um, that's the basic concept of it. It's really a mess. It's old and a mess. Um, and yeah, the new the new design when we make that will be a lot better for this. But it's a good proof of concept. Yep. Um, so we're not sure how long that'll take. Um, so. Don't wait around too long for the next video. <laughs> well, 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 wait, wait around, but uh, yeah, subscribe so you're informed yeah. when we release it. Yeah. So, do you want to start it up and show some of the functions? Or? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, let's step through the the startup. No, you can't go in there yet. Mm -hmm. There are other things that need to be turned on and stuff. So, for example, if we're showing all the features, turn on the cobblestone and the glass loader. This thing is going to lag me so horribly. Um, wow, I actually don't know what the rotator plus the glass loader will do. Lagwise, for me, I, I don't know what you're going to see. Um, okay, let's see so that. Do you, let's see. We could put a glass floor on this and call it a disco floor. <laughs> you could. It's pretty pretty trippy. <laughs> trippy, man. Okay. So let's seek to zero. I've just changed the value, so uh, this is zero. All zeros in binary. But you know, it's really zero. And in our counter over here, it's going to have to count from 4 to 30, and then it will increment to zero again. You can you can see the bus lines over where I am, which I think is now Alex Vision, uh, change to reflect the, the current value of the, um, the current value of the tape, so that you can read it as a person over there and say, "Hey, I'm at this address." You also, if you wanted, could route it to something else. Um, say. Yes say a it, CPU that would be able yes. to um, say I want this address and then it could do whatever function uh, yeah, so basically a, it's set up so that you could use it in a full computer if you really yeah, wanted that, to uh, for, in terms of circuitry this is an open ended line it just goes to some torches there so that a person can see it but you could just as easily route that line to uh, a processor that could perform logic and say hey I'm at this address, I want to save this to register and then add this to another thing I just called from somewhere or that I, uh, is a remainder from another calculation and then I want to take this and save it back to this byte and it would probably take a while because it would have to rotate through things and I, I'm thinking about how to perform logic to rotate two directions but I'm not sure if you can do that physically. Um, uh, I've actually made a tape that goes both ways before. Yeah. Okay. It might look into using that because that would be really cool. 
because um, then you could shorten your find your your read times or your seek times. Oh, it looks like we've found zero. Yay! So if we look, the emerald block should be at the read position. Yep. Emerald at the read position. Now I'm going to go in uh, into the control room over here. And let's say, okay, my my values are all on. They're all cobblestone. You want you want to come to the control room and show them this. So the values are all on for this byte. So I'm going to say, uh, well, I'll start with don't hit it. Don't hit it. Should. So as you can see, the address went up by one. Yep, it just went to the next. Byte. Now let's change this byte. Right? Now it, it doesn't change these these displays because these displays are are showing the uh, an old thing. Actually, I don't know what they're doing right now. Oh, you have this. The C function is on. Thank. Okay. Uh, well, let's change byte three in that case. Okay. Uh, Edit, and then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick what I want my value. To be. So I'm going to say I want my value to be this. That would be one, correct? One, yes, one. And then I'm going to also uh, say blank one, blank one, blank one, blank one. So oh, I, I messed that up. Okay, so it's actually one zero one zero one one zero one. Anyway, uh, and then I'm gonna. Uh, and Should I go out there so I can watch it? Uh, well, in a second, in a second, because I now need to explain what's happened to the display the current value. So as soon as I hit the edit button, what it actually did is it enabled the buffers and it rotated the piston by one and cleared that row. Uh, if you come look over here now, it's pushed out a hole whole row here. And it was actually a little bit derpy because we tried to, um, so I think I, yeah, I erased the base of the table. Um, it would appear so. Actually, no, 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 that, something weird happened there that probably has to do with the fact that we had, oh no, okay, yeah. We messed something up by having that seek function on. Ah, it appears you have erased the roof of that. Yeah, but it's slice. rotated too. It rotated too far because here, I'm gonna go hit edit again and watch that. Uh, there. Sorry about this. It's seek function is always a pain. There we go. So that went and that took and it wrote our values. And now watch watch what happens when I, I'm going to hit the don't edit button, just increment it by one. So it has in the buffer currently saved that the the, the byte I just had, which was, I believe, uh, that would be byte, uh, five would be byte five. Uh, I wanted to edit it, so I'm going to say don't edit to byte six, and as this edit, as this rotates one, should clear it. It appears that clearing it failed on one piece. Tom, uh, you're, uh, hold on, the glass feeder seems to have died. Oh dear. That would explain why it failed to. Yep. That would be why. Ah, so it appears to have pushed one of the pistons into an incorrect position. Yes, there are improvements in a lot of designs to be made. Um, that can be fixed later. Anyway, uh, on a basic level, it, it wipes that, and then you saw it write, write cobblestone into that, though what it was writing into wasn't clear. And I guess we don't need the tape to be functioning to show them the buffer. So if you come over here, uh, you can just take a side shot of this, and I'll talk about what I'm doing with the control room. So I'm currently at byte. Uh, 
uh, that would be byte 11. I don't know how it got there so fast, but okay. It's at byte 11, and I'm going to say edit. Now what you should see there uh, is it toggles to the next, uh, it, it toggles between which buffer I'm writing to. Now, as I set this here, you should see a change in the uh, a change in the value of the T flip flop I'm writing to. So out here, if you look, these blocks are now pushed up into a position where they're uh, they're connecting power. So when I go over here and I increment by one by, I'm going to press the Don't Edit button. It connects that to the right head and it writes the value. So it just goes through that over and over and over to uh, to tell this what to write, um, and that lets you read to well, sorry, re read to again, uh, read from a byte and then write a different value to it later. Um, I think that's it. Uh, and again, it looks a lot more complicated than it really is in concept, simply because it's a mess and things are all things. Yep. Okay, so after this, there's going to be a montage of the house being built and maybe a couple of shots of some of this redstone operating, um, hopefully at night because that looks cool. Uh, so this is Alar70 and Tom signing out or something. Or something. Or something. Such as hasta la vista. Okay, bye.